Yeah. Emma, just well. quickly, we're just uh, coming in. The English batters, they didn't um, they didn't perform really today, did they? Do you think that's a hangover from the Ashes, or did they feel an under strength team for the Irish? Well, no. If, if anything, on the uh, if they were under strength, it was in their bowling lineup. Um, they did leave some of the players. Obviously, Flintoff wasn't uh, wasn't here. Yeah, was Andrew Strauss play. wasn't here. And uh, but no, Joe Denley who came in on the debut made 67. Luke Wright made 36, and Matt Fire 29. But it's actually down to the Irish bowlers. Trent Johnson was absolutely fantastic. On the front of Cap, four mm -hmm. for 26. Andre Bowser two for 38. Alex Cusack two for 41. So a very disciplined display. And in the field, some outstanding catching. John Mooney taking a two-handed diving catch, and Kevin O'Brien taking a one-handed excellent catch to his left. Yeah, it's so great. actually it was, it's down to the Irish fielding and bowling. It's great to see the uh, Irish team improving all the time. You, of course, you followed them, I suppose, from the birth of the Irish cricket team at the World Cup a couple of years ago in the West Indies. Do you think that they're improving constantly, or will we see more from the Irish team? Will we get better improvement in the next World Cup, or what's to come, you know, from the Irish team? There's plenty, there's plenty to come, there's plenty to come. I mean, they've uh, made it to the next uh, 50 over World Cup. They'll be qualifying for the 2020 World Cup coming up um, uh, next April. Um, the under-19s are on the way to Canada to qualify for the World Cup. So, yeah, everything's going very well at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I was, sorry, I was about... So I was about to ask you about that, the youth development. Is there been money being put, pumped into the youth development in the country? We, like, are we seeing an improvement now because of the success in the World Cup? Is Ireland crick, Irish cricket going to be better and better? Or is is things being done, do you know what I mean, to uh, yeah, well, improve? Without a doubt. I mean, right. the outstanding batsman for Ireland today was Paul Sterling. He's 18 years of age. Just got his A-level results last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, he scored 30 not out uh, against the English bowling attack. Um, looked like he was, uh, you know... Uh, 30 year old but he uh, yeah. that's 18 years of age was able to clinch a game like that and that's the kind of talent we have and uh, I suppose as long as England don't sit decide to, to rob a few more yeah, we were obviously missing that. Owen Morgan and Joseph so as long as, as long as we can hold on to them we're going to improve yeah we're not we're not in danger of losing our stars are we? Uh, well we've lost them I mean Owen Morgan was uh, in the England lineup today but I think we might hold on to Paul starting for a couple of years he's only 18 so hopefully we'll have a We'll have a, but I mean, that's a sign as well that Irish cricket is doing well, that our players are good enough to play at international level for England, you know. Well, is the day coming close to Ireland are going to become a test nation? Well, I don't think so. I mean, test, test cricket is, is a different ball game and what the future of test cricket is. But what Ireland wants is to be able to play on a regular basis these types of games. I yeah. mean, there were five and a half thousand people here in Stormont today. Great atmosphere and um, a great game in the end. And that's what the Irish players want. Whether it be test cricket, test cricket, five day test cricket in Ireland just isn't viable. There's not mm. the TV, there's not the, there's not the crowds for it. But certainly one day internationals, 2020 internationals, that's the future for Irish cricket really. Yeah, was this uh, an opportunity lost now? It looked like they really could have done the business up in Stormont uh, earlier on. It was an opportunity lost, yeah. They did have a chance there today to, to do something and uh, just kind of fell short. Uh, the spin actually in the end uh, uh, got to which happens to us a lot. Some of the some of the top quality spinners, actually, it was always Shah, who's an occasional spinner, actually, for England. Yeah. Three wickets for two runs, and uh, but it was a it was a good performance. They're doing the man of the match awards now, and Trent Johnson has probably missed out because England have won. But it would have been the it would have been fantastic for him to get the man of the match on mm -hmm. hundred cap to take four wickets. That would have been fantastic, all right? Uh, Emma, I was just going to say to you, Trent Johnson, you thought what should have been the man of the match. Who is the leading star for Irish cricket at the moment? Who is, like, Mr. Fantastic when it comes to Ireland cricket? Oh, we have a number. I mean, our captain, William Porterfield, is an excellent batsman. Niall O'Brien, um, a fantastic player as well. Uh, we can keep a batsman. Uh, Boyd Rankin, again, we were missing Boyd Rankin today. We talked about the English players that aren't here. Um, Boyd Rankin, a six foot eight fast bowler, missed out because of a groin strain. But no, we have we've just plenty. And as, as I say, there's a bunch of under 19 kids coming up who are ready and willing and able actually to step straight into the team. And we've seen that with Paul Sterling today. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, just final, is is there much club cricket happening in Ireland, or is it basically like we know that the Irish team do play uh, club games in England? But is there much like of development happening in Ireland with the club teams? And will we see cricket as a professional sport in the future? I don't think cricket has a professional sport. You will see uh, professional cricketers, um, uh, you know, playing for Ireland. Mm -hmm. Basically, by their, their country will pay for them to play, and we have two of them already in Alex Cusick and Trent Johnson. Um, and what you have, I mean, cricket is, is, is thriving at club level and at junior level. We have the um, All Ireland final is on now. Actually, if any of your listeners want to come out next Friday out to Milverton and the Aries, we have a it looks like a great contest lined up between Leinster and uh, team from the North West on a man. I think if, if anyone out there actually wants to see what, what we're talking about with some of the talent. What time is that at, Emma? 
That game will start at uh, midday in Milverton and Skerries, the, uh, the home of the Hills Cricket Club. Mm. That's absolutely fantastic. Right? I'm sure plenty of our listeners will be interested in going along to that. I uh, would like to thank you very much for joining us live from Storm Climate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emmett. Take care, all of it. Bye bye. All right, now, Ben Finnegan, it's time for us to talk a bit of rugby. Well, Jerry, yeah, it's exciting times now for Irish rugby, of course. Had the triple, triple winner last year's balls. Munster winning the Magners, Ireland win the Heineken Cup, and indeed, uh, no, Leinster win the Heineken Cup. That's right. Yeah. And Ireland win the Grand Slam, of course. Great year well, for fantastic, Irish rugby. Fantastic, fantastic year for Irish mm-hmm. rugby. Um, uh, I seriously doubt we'll uh, reach the dizzying heights again. You never know. There is lots of development going on at youth level and uh, at senior level as well, of course. And we have Leinster playing tonight against London Irish. So, and they're in the same oh, European yeah. group, so, you know, good things to come. Leinster right. have really, really uh, pumped into their squad this year with um, investment. Um, Mike Ross and Nathan Hines. Mm-hmm. Nathan Rennie. Hines, of course, the Lions player, and uh, Scotland International, real quality in the second row to join Leo Cullen and Big Mal. So, I'm hoping, I think, I think Leinster could do the double if they really go for it this year. I think they could uh, out, uh, outdo Munster and indeed all the other European European teams. Would they be um, the first team to do the double? They would be, I, well as far as I know, they'd be the first team to do the double. Of course there's different leagues, there's the French League and the English Premiership, which yeah. uh, Wasps are always, and Leicester are always doing very well in that. But I think Leinster do, they, you have to fancy their chances. As well, really exciting stuff this year. We have Owen Redden who came over from Wasps, and he's now going to be playing with uh, Jonathan Sexton. And that uh, he's hopefully the next Ron Nogara, the next one to fill the shoes this year, so hopefully... Yeah. We can build up a bit of a partnership between those two and have an alternative for O'Gara and O'Leary or Stringer. So it's great stuff for Irish rugby. Now, uh, Sean O'Brien, is he going to fill the void left by the very, very big shoes mm. of Rocky Elson? Yeah, well, you, you said the word there, very big. Rocky Elson, of course, the new star in Australian rugby. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know, Sean, Sean O'Brien, he's, he's a young, very young player, but he has really showed his stuff at youth level under 18, under 19, and I think he was in the Ireland A team. So hopefully, it'd be great, Ireland do need a few more flankers. We have Paddy Wallace, who's a bit old, and, you know, get, get now old, as they say, Jerry. Get now old, now old, so it. We, we need a bit of new blood, all right, in there, but I'm more worried about the backs. I really think that um, yeah. Brian O'Driscoll, he is one of the best centres, but he's getting he's getting old as well. We need a replacement. So, so you need backup. Oh, definitely backup, because we have. I don't think we have much Ulster listeners here, so I wouldn't be afraid to say the likes of Andrew Trimble and them aren't that great. So we need a bit of better backup. We hopefully now we have. Um, you better hope there's no Ulster <laughs> fans listening to us this evening. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, there's not much that can be said about Ulster rugby at the moment, so we won't even go into that, to be honest. That's fair enough. But um, no, I'm hoping Leinster rugby we can do it. We have the game tonight. I don't. Know, it's only starting at seven half seven, so sure, next week we'll let you know how they get on, and hopefully good things to come this year. Of course, Brian O'Driscoll, um, as after having a bit of an Indian summer over the last year, yeah. as they say. Now he must be in contention for player of the world player of the year. Yeah, well, or is, that, is that too much to say? Well, you've never too much to say from you, Jerry. But you know, ah. hopefully, I, everyone in Ireland wants Brian O'Driscoll to do well, and we always want to see the Irish players doing good. And he can. He had an amazing year this year with the Grand Slam. He really, really did guide yeah. us to it. But um, yeah. hopefully, he has a bit left in the bit more left in the locker, as they say, and we can see more tries from him this year. Maybe he'll get World Player of the Year. I'm not sure. There is a lot of other young players, and South Af- the South Africans really are. Top notch, especially Fantastic, with, with yeah. the beastly uh, holding up the front. So it's, uh, I was, I was more impressed with the hits that Brian O'Driscoll took, and the way he scrummaged across <laughs> the line with a couple of tries rather than his absolutely fantastic running. Yeah, well, he, he, he really is a target point. man now for all the other teams. They really do want to like pump into him and knock the stuff out of him. But he has toughened up ever since you know New Zealand when that horrible tackle was made on. Well, wouldn't oh, say tackle. Hanu Maga. Yeah. Yes. The villain. We won't say any more on that. We'll get kicked off the air. So, anyways, um, yeah. So Brian O'Driscoll. Hopefully, him now. We've lots of new exciting uh, players like Rob Kearney and Luke Fitzgerald and Rob Kearney, correct? Yeah. Player, yeah. Also, hopefully now the backs will have plenty of firepower there. So, if if we can pump in to the youth and get a few more players up, it's really good things to come this year. So uh, it's looking up then. You're saying, yeah? Looking up, yeah. Well, there's not much competition on the national front. I'd say, like England. I don't know, Martin Johnson, he doesn't seem to be doing the business. We get all these terrifying interviews with him saying he's the big man, but I can't really see England doing anything this year. No, I can't see England doing anything this year either. And um, Martin Johnson, no, he's not that great for manager at all, is he? 